Hi everyone, so we're going to talk a little bit about Mars today from our perspective here. So again, I'm going to point out some important details here. So our average distance from the Sun from Mars, again, big large number, write it out here. So this is our distance from the Sun for Mars in kilometers. Another important thing to point out is our revolution compared to Earth. A few more things here. Surface tem temperatures, so maximum of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, minimum of 60, negative 63, and our co atmospheric composition here. So on Mars, there's a really high composition of carbon dioxide, 95.3. We have a composition of nitrogen here, water vapor, and other gases here. Okay, so Mars has been the center of speculation for extraterrestrial life, which I'm sure um, you have all heard theories on this. So early telescope images showed features that were perceived as irrigation canals. So these irrigation canals they believe were used um, by aliens or extraterrestrial life um, and people really feared that attack from Mars. Since then with better technology we've been able to see um, the surface of Mars more clearly. So this top, uh, topographical map shows the different pits and valleys that we can see on Mars. So we see as we get higher, uh, it turns to that red or gray color. And as we go lower, it's a darker blue, um, just to show the different highs and lows on the planet. So what are these different highs and lows? So um, the Martian surface includes volcanoes that are really tall wide swept plains and enormous canyons. So all of these different things are features that we can see on Mars. This valley, Valley Smarinis, is probably the biggest canyon that we see on Mars and it stretches about one-fifth the circumference of Mars. So we can see how far this is stretching right here on the surface. And this is about equal to as wide as the United States is on um, Earth. So we can see how long this is in comparison. Also has many volcanoes here. Um, the largest being Olympus Mon. And it covers the area of the size of Missouri and rises three times higher than Mount Everest. So the Mount Everest is the tallest mountain range um, in the United in the earth and so imagine that three times higher protruding on um, Mars. So we have another image here of this mountain. You can see how long it goes till we get to a somewhat of a um, let's say sea level type thing. Okay we can really see this is over 20,000 meters tall um, at the reddest of our topographical mass, um, map here. And also there's a lot of crater impacts on Mars, so that's another thing that we're going to see as a feature on the surface of Mars. So these craters, since, um, the atmosphere on Mars is not as strong as that on the Earth, we have a lot of these large rocks, um, asteroids coming through and creating these craters. Um, and an interesting fact is that most of these craters are found on the southern hemisphere, suggesting that the northern hemisphere has been resurfaced since. So it also has some unusual features, so I'm sure all of you have heard of the face on Mars. Um, really that was due to, um, faulty or old technology after we have much better improved technology. We can see that this is just some sort of volcano or large mountain that we can see on Mars. Um, 
but all these features are different than maybe other planets that we've seen, are these very large um, mountain-like structures. So Mars is tilted at 25.9 degrees, which is really similar to Earth, and these hemispheres also experience this, uh, similar seasons. So we can look at those seasons by looking at these ice caps. So if we can see here in October, we have this really large ice cap covering it, which would be the winter for Mars. But um, here in March, we can see that ice cap um, sublime, so that dry ice because it's frozen carbon dioxide rather than frozen water that's on Earth, is going to become smaller. And you can see that because of the different seasonal changes. Um, that we have on Earth, very similar on Mars. So looking at some examples of water, um, since there is water vapor in the atmosphere, it is believed that there is frozen water or water available on Mars, which is another big speculation um, when we're talking about those things. So although sometimes the Martin sky is blue from what we can see it, it is going to take on a rust color because of the dust particles blown into the atmosphere by these strong winds. So the rock on Mars, it has a very nice rust color to it. So these high winds are going to create dust devils on the Martian surface. So those are kind of like wind storms that we would think of here. So those High winds create those wind storms that are going to really um, bring that dust up into the atmosphere of Mars. So by studying rocks and craters on Mars, we hope to gain sight to the history of Martian water. So as I said, the huge canyon um, is believed to have been created by water. So that is something that we are hoping to explore more as we continue to um, explore Mars. So these winding canyons um, on the surface that we showed here, we see this canyon right here, is believed to be a riverbed. They're very similar to the riverbeds. So here is Mars. But this is a very similar riverbed on Earth. So that's why it's believed that there was once liquid water found on Mars. So some more um, different examples of this, of ancient waterways that we might have found on Mars. Um, we can see all of these different sedimentation um, patterns from the earth right here, these sedimentation patterns, and we can see similar ones here on Mars, which is some more evidence to show that um, relation of water on Mars. We also have layers of rock, which is something that we can see in our fossil record um, on earth. So those layers of rock are really going to add to that theory that there was water on Mars previously. Um, so these types of rocks right here especially are usually formed by water, which is another reason um, supporting that theory. So the big question is that is Mars able to support life because it does have a very similar um, build, especially with the belief of um, that water was once on Mars. So we can see here that we have these mechanical arms that are collecting samples of soil to analyze its chemical makeup. And we're searching for signs of different microscopic life because that is how life on Earth started. Um, so meteorites are believed to have come from Mars because of the chemistry and consistency. And they have been ejected due to some sort of impact. So we have these different types of meteorites right here that are believed to come from Mars, right here, made of nickel. And then these rocks also show the possibility of fossils of microbial life, which again would show um, 
a possibility for life-sustaining things on Mars. Um, though it's not 100% because they are possible non-biological expectations uh, explanations here. Mars does have two moons that we're going to talk about briefly. So Deimos and Phoebos. So these are two just small rock-like, um, small rocks, non-spherical in shape. And they're most, they're not any big moons. So uh, our moon um, is considered to be one of the giant moons. These are not. So these are just believed to be planetismals that was captured by the uh, gravity from Mars. Okay, so if we do a quick comparison here, looking at the different inner planets, so our terrestrial planets here, we have Mercury of no known uh, liquid or solid. So our interior here, the interior on Venus is um, at least partially molten. Our Earths, we know we have a solid inner core and a molten outer core and a mantle. And Mars, we have probably a solid core here. Our surface on Mercury, we have that heavy uh, cratering or scarps. On Venus, we have mostly volcanic plains, rolling hills, and volcanoes. Um, Earth, we can see little cratering, continental lands and oceans, um, and all these different global tectonic plate um, structures. And then on Mars, we see moderate cratering, weathering, dormant volcanoes, and really big canyons. So the temperature you can see really varies. Um, our two closer planets have a very high temperature in comparison to our further planets here for our terrestrial. Atmospheres are pretty uh, significantly different between all of them that we can see um, in our three right here. They do have similar um, elements here. So, and then lastly, magnetic fields. Um, we have either none detected, very small amounts. Um, Earth does have a very strong uh, magnetic field, and then Mars has a very weak magnetic field. So if we're looking at size here, we have Earth and Venus being very similar in size, um, and then our other two planets that are quite smaller. Um, the biggest thing to note for our inner planets here is that our Earth has what we consider a giant moon. Um, so we're going to want to note that when we're thinking about our terrestrial planets. So thinking about some of the things that we thought about this section, which two planets, um, Mercury closest to the sun or Earth has the coolest temperature. Uh, daytime temperature is much higher than Earth, but nighttime, Mercury is going to be much lower. So that has a larger variation because of maybe a lack of atmosphere here. Which planet is most similar to Earth? So the most similar in size and chemistry and distance is Venus. But as we're talking about similar length day, seasons, erosions, um, we're going to be Mars here. Uh, the composition surrounding the clouds of Venus. So they're primarily made of that sulfuric acid, which makes it very difficult um, to have livable conditions here. Does Mars have liquid water? That's going to be a big one, but there are strong indicators that suggest it might have liquid water in the past. Um, is there life on Mars today? Um, there is no current discovery of that. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, please take those notes on those handouts of, that I've given you, or you can continue taking notes on your own. I will see you soon.